So today I'm going to be joined by Andrew Grimes, CEO of Julion. Thank you, and I'll hand over to Andrew. Thank you very much for, for that, that warm welcome and, and for inviting uh, Julion to share some information today about our company. Um, for those of you who, who don't know, Julion is a, a battery storage company based here at Cicada. Um, and we're working to bring a, a non-flow zinc bromide battery to the market. We spun out of Sydney University in 2015 and we've raised about $20 million so far from our, our investors to, to help develop our product. I'm the CEO of the company and I'm joined here today by... Hi, um, I'm Glenna, uh, uh, currently R&D manager uh, in July. All right. So... As I said, um, July was spun out of Sydney Uni back in 2015. Uh, Professor Thomas Mushmeyer had some chemistry that was very, very interesting in the laboratory and, and um, a, a company was established five years ago now. Um, we've been here at Cicada for about 18 months. Um, you can see on the screen there on your right hand side some of the, some of the developments of our, of our batteries from the very, well, unusual days back in 2014 through to something that uh, looks more or less like a car battery in size and shape now. Um, on the, on the, the main photo there just shows some of our, our test chemists working to, um, to test our batteries. Um, why are we doing this? The, the main reason driving this company is, is the growth of uh, global energy requirements. As, as the, the world moves away from fossil fuels, we, we need to provide more and more energy storage. And you can see from, from this, this, this has been growing at an incredible rate. Um, when you consider that the world's entire battery storage would only power our needs for less than a minute, you get a bit of an idea of the, the potential of this market. Everybody here knows lithium batteries. They're in your phone, they're in your laptops, and, and more and more they're in large scale power storage. But lithium iron has got some issues, particularly around its supply chain. It's, some of its raw materials are very limited, and some of them come from countries with, with difficult human rights records. You also probably know lead acid. These, these batteries are, are in your car. And if anybody has ever run their car battery flat, you'll know some of the problems with lead acid. They're very easily killed. They're very heavy and they're not so robust. So one of the things, one of the great things about our batteries, they're hundred percent usable. You can run them down to flat with no issues um, and they can be brought back up and, and run very happily. It's, it's a, great, a great thing, whereas some of our competitors, as you can see, um, the capacity that they state isn't really the capacity that, that um, is available. So our batteries, they, are, they have some unique advantages. As I said, they're 100% dischargeable to zero volts, fully recyclable. We don't use toxic raw materials and our raw materials are widely available and safe to operate across a wide range of conditions. We, we think that gives us a unique advantage and as we continue to develop the products will be our, our, our selling point. Um, where we see our market primarily is, is, as I said before, the growing stationary energy storage. So you, some of you may have seen our, our product, our, well, our light benches at, at Sydney Uni. There was a lot of publicity about that. And you can see on the left-hand side, we, we installed six of those in Sydney University. Um, but beyond that, some of the typical applications are things like mobile desalination, pumping units. And then as our, as our products mature, moving into the solar farms, supporting the wind farms and that sort of thing. Um, in terms of the team here, you know, I, know, I know a lot of you are, are interested in that side of it. We've got a a relatively small team, but, but growing. It's, we've got 25 staff. Um, this is a photo taken of us recently at Cicada. It's a, it's a very mixed staff. You've got old timers like myself who have been around for 25 plus years, down to people who have, who have just graduated. So it's a very diverse team. It's not just scientists and engineers. We have admin people, we have business development. 
development people. Um, there's a couple open positions with the company at the moment in business development and battery test, battery testing. Um, the company, for a for a fairly small company, we've been in the news a lot, and it's been it's been really really heartening that you know we we recently our, our founder you can see there Professor Mushmeyer won the Prime Minister's Award only two weeks ago for for innovation. But we've also been appearing on TV and on um, on the news, and, and it's great to see to be able to get that sort of publicity for for a um, a small company to get recognised both here and overseas. Um, it's very early days for us, obviously. The um, the there's a lot of work for us to to do to bring our product to the market, but it's an exciting time to be working at Reliant, and, and we have a great team here, and we're very very excited to be facing the challenges of the future. Um, thanks everybody, that's a, just a quick one. I'm happy to take questions or if they're towards the technical end or, or the scientific recruitment end, um, Zainet can, can help me. Thank you, Andrew. That's an awesome uh, presentation because it's all about an academic research idea being spun out into real world and that's always a really fantastic story to tell. For Q&A, as I said, we've got Zainet with us. so. We'll you know, throw your questions in the Q&A and we've got about an hour to cover them. So we'll get through as many as we can. I might just kick off though um, with a personal question to you both before we head to some of the ones that are listed here, just so we can set the scene a bit about your own journeys. Um, but also to understand, I, I understand the latest hire at Jalan is actually yourself, Andrew. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. And then in fact, this is my first presentation. So, so excuse me if I had some hiccups there, but yes, yeah, so, um, I only joined three weeks ago uh, the, the the company, so it's it's it very. I'm on a very steep learning curve and getting my head around it. I'm super impressed with the team so far. Um, my background originally, I, I was a chemical engineer, studied chemical engineering. Um, I've been working in a typical role with some of the big majors like Shell and ICI, um, and I stepped back about a year and a half ago. I, I wanted to do something different. I, I went back to uni. I studied a master's of sustainability. Um, I wanted to, to get involved in, in the change that's happening, particularly around the move to renewables. And fortunately for me, I just as I was coming to the end of my, my studies, which literally were only a week ago, um, I, I managed to, to hook up with the guys at, at Jalion and, and, and found myself here in, in what's just an amazing role for me. Awesome, that's fantastic. And how about yourself, Zena? Um I have more academic background. Um, I have a PhD, which I, um, I was awarded in France from University of Sorbonne. Then I moved to Sweden for a postdoctoral fellowship. I'm a material scientist. Um, and then uh, I was looking for opportunities in uh, sustainability and uh, batteries were, uh, really it was exciting and em emerging um, topic. So when I uh, found this um, position in July and um, even though I loved my life in Sweden, I came all the way to Australia and, and I didn't regret even a second. Yeah. Um, and I started here as a postdoctoral researcher in the University of Sydney as a material scientist, uh, scientific chemist. And uh, there on, I took up different roles. Uh, first, part time uh, project engineer, and then became a team leader and uh, less in the lab, more man managerial jobs. And currently, uh, I'm the R&D manager of the Lion. Uh, we have a we have about uh, 10 to 12 uh, technical, uh, our team size is about 10 to 12 people with very different backgrounds. And so exciting to be here and see how uh, we've we evolved in the last two years. And I started last uh, two years ago. Fantastic. What I'm hearing here is like scientists turned, like you found something motivating in sustainability, which is what I love. And you found that to be something you wanted to try and do something in. So it's really great to hear that you both landed here and do that. Um, Andrew, just before we move ahead, if you don't mind, just stop sharing your screen just so that we get the full picture of you both on the screen. That would be great. Thank you kindly. 
Um, and I guess you talked about what makes the batteries such a game changer, but we've got some uh, questions about the batteries themselves, which I might throw to at the minute. Uh, James has asked, what's the difference between your battery and the Tesla battery? Yes, Tesla batteries are lithium ion based and uh, they, they are tuned for, um, for high power applications, which a car requires. They are more uh, targeted towards energy storage uh, realm. So in that case, um, it, it's really different because they're designed for different purposes. Uh, we, we are more um, uh, higher energy than, uh, not as powerful, but can store uh, long term so higher energy type of batteries. Gotcha. Very cool. And I guess you're also comparable to lead acid batteries. Um. Yeah, gotcha. I think that answers that one. Um, I guess from my perspective, you've spun out of a university and that journey is usually a really tricky one. You mm. mentioned um, Thomas Mashemeyer won a prize recently and that's fantastic. Is he a part of the company would be a big question that I have. Yeah, look, good question. Um, Thomas comes in a couple of times a week. It's obviously, we're not very far from Sydney University. Um, so his role continues to, he's still the chairman of the company um, and he works one or two days a week balancing it with his, his university commitments. But he's still very, very involved in the company and we, we love his input, particularly when it comes to the fundamental chemistry that's going on. Gotcha. And what does it take, do you think? And maybe, I mean, Andrew, you're still new, but maybe you have a bit of history or maybe Zainab can answer this being from the academic environment, what does it really take to spin this out of university? Are there any sort of three key things that you think are just, you should know this because it's going to be like this kind of learnings? Yeah, look, I mean, the, you need a great idea. It, 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 the, you, you can't start a company without something special. And, and this, was, this was something that July and did have. It was, it was an idea that was ticking away in, in Professor Mushmeyer's mind for quite some time. So that's the first thing. You, you need some people willing to take risks. Mm -hmm. and, and that means both the people that want to come and work for the company and the people who want to invest in the company. And I think those are the those are the two things that have really made July a success. It's it's a great idea, some really fundamental, innovative chemistry that we've patented and, and is behind our product. But secondly, employees who are super motivated and super committed and willing to take a risk, mm -hmm. and investors who are really, really supportive and willing to take a risk. So hopefully we reward them both. Gotcha. Yeah, that makes absolutely. A great idea is is, um, is definitely needs to be there, but it's not enough to have a great idea. There are so many great ideas who couldn't make to be a product just because um, they didn't suit it. They didn't suit to current uh, manufacturing processes. So it's really hard to find when your technology is not transformative. It's really hard to find manufacturers that will commit to buy um, uh, machinery to uh, get your product into the real world. What we are trying to do is use existing manufacturing processes to suit our technology. So, um, and which enables us to kick off like um, one step ahead. Absolutely. So I think that's so true because when you have an idea and then you you know, one thing is one big thing people always talk about is market opportunity, but integrating that into the real world is always a big challenge, no matter what part of STEM you come from. I think you really have to understand that piece early on. So that's a really key point. I, I think also for, and this would be the same for probably all the other startups here at Cicada, anybody who works in a startup has to have that ability to bounce back from things going wrong because things always go wrong and you always hit dead ends. You think you've got a great idea and it falls flat. You have to be able to pick yourself up and, and, and go again. And that's a real, really important part of, of working and founding these startups. Gotcha. And do you think that goes for the whole team? When you So, you know, it's not just the senior level that are leading in that. It's a startup life, isn't it? It's, it's everybody that's involved in a company. Yeah. And, and a huge part of the, of the job of people like Zainab and I are 
mentoring the junior guys so that when things do go wrong, we just, it's not the end of the world and we just say, okay, that didn't work. What else have we got to try? Um, and we're still here, so it's still working for us. Great, that's fantastic. So we've got a question here. Um, Zainab mentioned her PhD. How do you guys value PhDs and academic qualifications when hiring versus experience? Yeah, um, a PhD is very valuable, especially in the uh, early stages of the company, but our, our, we, are, we are heavy R&D. We value out of the box thinkers and also people who are motivated to learn and expand their knowledge. So you often uh, have to leave two different jobs in uh, uh, in in July and 50% uh, of uh, research, 50% of uh, development. So the person is, is almost never in comfort zone. And PhDs who have um, uh, have managed their own projects are already experienced in this area. But however, um, um, startup is an uh, 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 organism that's in evolution. So it always evolves. We always need to change. We are never in our comfort zones. So the uh, employees should be able to evolve within the startup. So, and in mid stages, you need more engineering skills to deliver the ideas, to research and make it into a real product. Mm -hmm. That so makes other skills are very valuable and appreciated and eagerness to learn and uh, get out of the comfort zone. That's really appreciated. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely fair. And, and like you said, it's an evolving process. So things can change. You may find, you know, a new part of your job that you really enjoy that you never expected as well in these sorts of situations, which is always great. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go back to the tech for a little while. Um, so how are the, You've said the batteries are used at the moment in benches at Sydney Uni, was that correct? That's right. Um, we've got a couple of questions on, uh, is there anything else they're being used for right now? Is one, of, is one of the questions relating to the product? Yeah, so at the moment, the benches are the only deployment in the field. We've got a ton of, a ton of product on test inside our laboratory. And at the moment, we're in the process of building a desalination system and a water pumping system. And they'll be probably going out in the next six months or so out into the field. Awesome. And if there was a dream product you'd want to use your batteries in, what would it be? The ultimate vision? Yeah, look, I mean, to go back to one of, one of the slides that I showed, um, what we see is as our product matures and evolves that we will be in pretty much the entire stationary storage market, which takes you from the sort of thing that you find in your houses, the small, small battery systems in your, in your houses, up all the way through to the enormous ones that are supporting solar farms. Um, for the moment where we see our sweet spot, and this is only for the next 12 months where we're focusing, is on some of the agricultural applications because they are sometimes particularly difficult for mm. lead acid or lithium to fill. Um, and, and some of our advantages, it plays into our favor there, but we by no means are going to limit ourselves to that. As I said, we, we in the next two or three years, we hope to be across the entire stationary storage market. Gotcha. And I guess further to this, someone called Vern is out there asking, is it possible that this technology will ever be for something like household use or is it always going to be for the big things? Yeah, yeah. So no, really, our product is, is larger and heavier than lithium. So you're unlikely to see it in your mobile phones or your hearing aids. Um, but anything that's stationary where weight isn't so, and size isn't so much of a problem, um, and so, as I said, it, really everything from your household upwards um, is where we would like to see our products. Fantastic. And I guess if we're talking about, you know, future visions and where you want your product to go and what's next for you guys, are you engaging your customers, your potential customers now um, and partners? Or do you, you know, how do you go about making those relationships and how much they matter in a startup? Yeah, look, it's a good question because, of course, until you're ready to actually get your product out there, you don't want to engage too much because in actual fact, right now, we, 
we have a lot of inquiries coming through for people who want our product and, and, and we're not ready yet to supply it in the quantities that they're after. But having said that, we have to be engaging the market because we have to know exactly what it is that they want and make sure that our development path is, is, um, meets what the market needs. And so it's a little bit of a balancing act, I have to say, but we, we've got a lot, of, a lot of close partners who, when we need to, we can lean on them, work on them with, with, with deployments um, bigger and bigger. So... Um, as we grow, we'll just start engaging more and more with, with the market. And what do you think those partners are looking for? Because somebody's asked here, how much testing has the battery gone through to make sure it's safe? Is that something, you know, people want to see? What sort of data are they looking for for you to, for take, to take this on commercially, I suppose? Yeah, yeah. So, look, the, what they're looking for is, is obviously price. Everybody wants to know about price. They're wanting to know about long-term performance. So after how many cycles do you lose? How many percent of your capacity? Um, they certainly want to know about safety, what happens in a fire, what happens if, if it gets pierced by a, a nail or a forklift tine or something like that. Um, so, you know, the, the tenders that go out are, are very, very specific about the requirements. And, and that's where, as we start to mature, we'll develop our value proposition to show how we can, we can at the same price as the competitors can offer a better product because of the other aspects of it. And how much testing have you done to date on, on those sorts of metrics? So in terms of, what's the, in terms of cycles, what's our most? Um, uh, 4,500 yeah. cycle lifetime. Yeah. yeah. It's still running. So yeah, the, Battery testing is a bit tricky because you need time to know a lifetime of your battery. It's the longest cycling battery that we have in the lab. And we, we have limited resources in terms of how many batteries we can run in one go. So the longest running is, uh, has done over 4,500 cycles, which we are very happy about. And no matter how hard we try in lab conditions, I'm quoting lab conditions, we couldn't um, damage our batteries with the abuse cycles, we couldn't uh, detect any toxic um, fumes or uh, gas release when we abuse them. Um, but more stringent tests are on uh, really planned when we, we are more at the manufacturing stage. At lab scale, we, we couldn't uh, really destroy the batteries yet, even though after heavy abuse cycles, uh, they run as usual <laughs> afterwards. So we are so, so far very happy but not at, uh, still uh, more needs to be done, surely. Yeah, but to give you an idea, 4,500 cycles, if, if a product was cycled every day, that's, do the maths in my head, over 10 years worth of operation with very, very low fade, um, which is, which is um, one, of the, one of the great advantages that our product will have. But as Zainab said, that, that's an evolving thing and for sure, um, when, when our product is going out into large solar farms, for example, by that stage, there will have been a lot more of that testing and, and a lot more maturity there. 100%. I'm going to ask one more question on the technical side and then we might move to some more people questions. Um, I've got a question from Matthew Chen who's asking, as, and forgive me if I'm a med tech background, so if I don't know, I think he's talking about zinc bromide, I'm gonna make the assumption. Um, as this technology progresses, do you see any potential for the Jalan technology to eventually be used in EVs? Or are there some fundamental technological limitations that limit applications in EVs? Yeah, so EVs are, as Zainab said earlier, they, there's two things that they need. One is a very high power output. And Sorry, the other, can you elaborate on EVs for anybody uh, else? Electric vehicles. Yeah, so electric vehicles, um, they require very high power output. When you, know, you put your foot down, you want it to go fast. Um, and they also require very high power density. So the amount of, sorry, energy density. So the amount of energy per kilo. And so that's not really where, where we see our products going. Um, we, we know that lithium is one of the lightest metals around, one of the lightest products around. And so that's why we see 
our target market is the stationary, i.e. not moving market. Um, so, yeah. Thank you. So I guess you talked about your diverse team, you know, all age ranges and all kinds of backgrounds and walks of life. What sort of culture do you like to set at Geelong? What are some of the things that makes you guys, you know, a great place to work? And how do you motivate your team and keep them motivated on such an, you know, up and down journey that is a startup? I think I might ask Zainab to answer that because um, I'm still motivated after three weeks, but but she's the one being managing her team over over two two years now. Yeah, we are very lucky to have a team who is self driven, who is curious, and they uh, they care for the uh, cause, the sustainability. And and I think that everyone enjoys with their own contribution. The fact that it's a small uh, team also makes it more exciting because we are a very flat organization. Your your voice, you will always contribute, you will always be heard. It doesn't matter what your experience or background is. Mm -hmm. So everyone is contributing. I think that's what uh, increases satisfaction in spite of all the other uh, strict deadlines or limited resources, which is inherent to startups. Uh, I think we are a team where everyone feels like their um, contribution is valued and everyone makes a difference. So uh, I think these are the things and also the culture and everyone being self-driven uh, uh, keeps us going. For, for me, I, 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 had, I, I had spent the first 25 odd years of, of, my, of my time Selling chemicals, um, helping make you know, helping shareholder create shareholder value, and and for me the chance to come and work for a company like Gelion that is is really trying to help the world transition away from fossil fuels, it somehow feels like a much more much bigger goal, much 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 loftier ambition. I think. Gotcha. So that's what probably drove you to take on this role. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think, um, I don't know, I forgot I was going to say something and I've lost it, but that's okay. I can move on to something else. Um, we've got Samantha here saying, what are some of the tips for interviews uh, for grads going for their first job with you, in particular with Jalan? Well, that's a good question. Maybe I'll answer and then and then Zainab can, can add something to that. I think I think we, we hinted on some of the things before that... We need people to be self-starting. We need people who are resilient so that if they try something and it doesn't work, they, they, they doesn't get them down, they get up the next day and we try something else. Um, and we need some people who are curious, but above all, people who are really committed to what we're trying to do. This, this, this it sounds a bit cliche, but it really is more than a job here. It, it's something that we, we want people who are passionate about. Oh, no, if you want. Yeah, really. Um, like who are happy to like problem solvers are really appreciated, and also we never have a blame culture here, so um, we encourage everyone to try all different things. So, um, simply because you never know what works or not. So yeah, and who are open for change? Yeah. We uh, we are we are a small company, so. Everyone has to basically have two jobs. Yeah. So diverse skills and people with uh, different hobbies are also very valued and interest in the. Yeah, that was one of my going to be another question I had. So I'm glad you said that because aside from your technical skills, there's always other skills and other qualities that you look for in candidates, and it's not just always I'm looking for an engineer so I just want someone with this spec record you there's a culture and a fit I guess and and that's lovely to hear um, Samantha's also asking what are the perks or best bits of working for July on? well of course you can see in the background that we're working at one of the most amazing places um, I've certainly worked in a lot of different places in my life and I've never ever come and work for a place as cool as Cicada here um, so, so that's that's a big perk. Where, look, we're a pretty relaxed, open-minded organisation. You know, people work hard, but nobody's clock watching. Um, so, if that sort of flexibility and that sort of fun and that sort of innovation appeals to you, 
then then this is the kind of place to come. Awesome. And so you've talked a bit about some of the roles that you're looking for in terms of growing out the team in 12 months. Um, do you mind if we go through a couple of those? Somebody else has also asked, will there be entry level positions coming up, maybe not right now, but coming up for electrical or electronic engineers? Yeah, so you, I just lost you a little bit, but you were just asking about whether there might be, what positions might be coming up yep. for electrical people. Yeah, so um, the, right now, I think I, I mentioned in, in my slide that we're looking for uh, an electrical, a person with specific battery test capabilities. Um, but our, what, what we expect as we start deploying our products more and more and more in the field, and, and this is over the next 12 months, that we'll be looking for people across a fairly broad spectrum. Um, so, you know, we'll start to need supply chain people, we'll start to need entry level people, um, we'll start to need more administration people. Our sales side is very, very small because mostly what we're focusing on is tech development now. Um, so, you know, I would just recommend if anybody's interested in what we're doing, um, follow us on LinkedIn or any of the socials or, or you know, we, we have a subscriber thing on our website where you can keep an eye on, on vacancies. But, yeah, look, we, we hope in the next, you know, year or two to start to be a real company providing real products out, in, out into the market and, and um, we'll need all sorts of people. Yeah, okay. And what about the company itself? What do you think's the major milestone or maybe top three milestones for next year? Yeah, so we have got two uh, relationships with manufacturing partners, one in Australia and one overseas. And we expect um, small scale production to start um, probably early 2021 and that's a huge thing for us because that moves us out of hand assembled product in the laboratory that we carefully put out into the field to sort of I won't say large-scale manufacturing but certainly mid-scale manufacturing and it also helps us drive our costs down as we as we start to make it we can refine that process um, so that's probably the the biggest milestone for us it, we, we had a little bit of a COVID interruption. It's very difficult to engage internationally while, while you can't travel. Um, it, you know, we're all hopeful that might be lifting in 2021. Um, but even despite that, we've made big steps. And that's probably one of the biggest milestones is that move towards a manufactured product working with manufacturing partners. Gotcha. Um, I think we've answered all of these. And we've talked about growth and skills. Is there anyone on the team that sort of, you know, you didn't expect them from their skill set to end up on the team, or has everyone come from backgrounds that you kind of expect? Yeah, I actually, yeah, we have people from very different backgrounds. Um, I myself was a, a material scientist, and and I. Uh, I think it's a surprise that I'm here, but I'm so happy to be here. We even have people from biology backgrounds. Yeah. Our, um, our production guy was making washing machines. Um, so, you know, I don't know if that's a typical step from making washing machines to, to uh, making batteries. But, um, yeah, some people are quite, quite an obvious step, like they've come from, you know, electrochemistry PhDs in, into the company. But... But some are, are a bit a bit bigger step, and and um, you know one of our key guys was an electrician, um, and he's he's now working putting our systems together. Um, so yeah, it, it, there's there's no problem with making it a jump as long as you've got the the mindset to be flexible about it. Gotcha. And do you have any advice generally for people? Oh, hold on, we've got another question. Well, I'll ask this one first. Do you have any um, advice? Generally, people out there, I mean, this is a STEM expo, you know, personal advice for them with regards to, you know, hunting for a job or just being at the front of the pack or any anything that you think they should, you know, knowledge from your own experience that you'd like to impart. Yeah, look, the thing that I would say is, is and, I, and I know everybody's heard this before, but so many jobs are not found on SEEK. 
mm. you know, then, then, or, or whatever the job boards are. There's so many opportunities. And, and my case is one, you know, it came from a coffee discussion with a guy that I hadn't caught up with for a while. And I said, hey, why don't we catch up for a coffee? And, and the next thing I knew, there was an opportunity um, for me to come and work for Julian. And so I would really strongly recommend, even, even the, these sort of discussions today, you know, some of them might not lead to something, but don't just sit at home looking at looking at the ads. Get out there, go go to get online, go to any of the any of the um, expos. Come come to Cicada, talk to people, and and just get get your network out there because there really are a lot of opportunities that 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 come through that that method. That's golden advice. I always encourage people to also step outside the comfort zone of academia if they're in academia and they want to get somewhere else you actually have to go to conferences and mixes outside of the ones that you're used to and I think that just hit the nail on the head there. Zainab how about yourself anything personal you'd like to impart on people out there? Even uh, doing things for self-education can lead to places where you mm. never thought you'd end up with so uh, just being uh, concentrated on things that they have personal interest on and then they will be noticed that's uh, what I think as well yeah I 100% back that too multi-skilling yourself and, and knowing what you love and what you're good at that's how you're going to hit the aces right is that even a saying hit the aces I just no I think that's up. but but the other thing is is you know I mean Zainep and I we're sort of midway through our careers or I've been around for a while not to be scared I mean it's it when you're when you're young you you sometimes lack that confidence think oh I can't go and ask that guy he looks older than me or more senior actually we would love to hear from people you know if I'm if really we're just normal people and there's nothing to be scared of it's it's really I, I do remember when I was when I was just graduated how I'd look at the senior guys in the organization and think oh they're so they know stuff they're you know, scary, unapproachable, but come and talk to us, you know, get online, link up with us on LinkedIn, what, whatever, just, just get yourself out there. That's very good advice and lovely, um, lovely to hear that you're open to that sort of thing because it, it makes a big difference when you're starting off. Um, Marcos has asked a question here, is there a story behind the name Endure for the battery? Uh, endure means um, because it's very resilient it, it doesn't catch fire and it's not high power but um, uh, high energy type of battery that's why hence the name endure makes sense why don't we talk about july and while we're at it as well then <laughs> <laughs> well you, you've done well to pronounce it correctly because a lot of people call it galleon and, and that's I won't say it's highly offensive to the founder, but he he rolls his eyes when he hears it. So originally our product used to have a, a special gel. We've moved on from that now. Um, and then obviously an ion, ch a charged particle that's part of our chemistry. So gel ion, um, that's, that's where we came from. Fantastic. Um, EJ has asked if there are possibilities to do internships with you guys. Absolutely. Um, we, we have got from time to time the need for short term work um, and when interns come past we always have a chat. Um, I think you, um, Zainet was interviewing one the other day so if, if you think you've got some skills and this is interesting um, get in touch um, and if there's something that, that we have that is a, is a, a relatively self-contained short-term project, then, then we'd, we'd love to hear from you. Awesome. And Saya or Saja, I'm sorry if I've got it wrong. How long do you think the batteries in the Sydney Uni benches will last? Ah, that's a good question. We, we, we've got, we're monitoring those guys every single day and we are hopeful that they will continue to go until our next generation is ready in the next we're actually making our next generation. And that was always the intention with, with the, the Sydney Uni benches that we would, as we make more and more iterations of our batteries, we'll swap out the old ones and put the new ones in. And so at the moment we, we watch them like a hawk and we, we work to keep them going. And, and, and look, we'll be honest, they're, they're certainly not ready for commercial deployments because 
they, they, our, our engineers work to keep them going and to provide test data back to our group here. But we certainly hope that as we swap in the later and later generations, eventually the generation that will be in there will be something we can just set and forget. Gotcha. Your product is always way behind your research. So the product is out there, we already improved it. Um, but hence there, there will be iterations. Mm. Absolutely. It's always so when you build something, it's never just the end. It's always an ongoing thing. And you also have to stay ahead of the curve in terms of competition and all the other the things that are changing in the landscape. So that's right. Um, pretty important. Uh, well, I can't see any more questions and I've actually gone through all of mine. So it is OK to wrap up if we would like to. If there's anything else either of you would like to add, um, feel free. No, look, that's, I think we've covered everything. I'd just like to say thanks again for the opportunity. It was really great to, um, to be able to do this and, and um, to, to hear the questions that are out there. No, I'd like to thank you both for joining us and everyone that tuned in today. We really appreciate, especially your time, those at July on. And I'd like to say a big thank you and shout out to our event sponsor, the City of Sydney and our event partner, South Everly. Um, for those of you that are tuned in, there should be some links in the chats to be able to connect to Andrew and Zainab and the July on team. So if you've learned a thing or two and are interested in their internships, definitely get in contact with them. We also have a fantastic job board, which should be in there too, which will have some of the roles that are going with a lot of the companies that are showcasing as part of this expo. There is another week, the last week I should say of Ask Me Anything sessions next week with some uh, deep tech companies who are also looking to hire and in different spaces. So please register, don't forget to. And we also have the massive showcase on December 17th. So for all the interested people out there, register now and we hope to see you then. And I'd like to thank you all for joining me today. Thank you.